We need a palate cleanser from J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Everybody, uh, can I have your attention for one second, please? We have a very special guest with us here today. He is one of my favorite musicians of all time. He's so awesome. Ah! Please, please, let's take, let's see if we can get him up. Come on. Inside you, inside you, inside you. This went from six to midnight. Teach me how to grow while I'm moving inside of you. Is it wrong to be inside of you, inside of you? Uh, welcome to Goblins of Discord. We're not experts. We don't know what we're doing. We just love Enneagram and we're all in like years deep into this um, at this point, some longer than others. And uh, sorry, I guess some of you do know more. I don't mean to imply you know as little as I know, but we're just wanting to riff on Enneagram stuff. The more we try to understand it, the deeper we get and the more lost we get. Oh, I'm Emily Lovell. I'm a social self pres nine. 973. And uh, yeah, just happy to be here with my internet friends. Hi, I'm Thomas. I'm a dark nine. I'm Larissa. I'm seven wing six, seven four nine, social self press. I'm Shanti. I'm uh, sexual self press, seven nine four. Well, I'm Bizu. I'm a three wing four, six wing seven, nine wing one, so SP, warm side. Um, for those who use stack ranges, uh, anti DJ. Christina mm. says, "Bitch, I'm not human." <laughs> That's your Maybe intro, you Christina. So with Marcy, I don't know too much about him. I asked my partner about him the other week. Um, he took me down a rabbit hole with Smiths. So I know mostly that kind of side of him, just a bunch of his music. I mean, I liked the Smiths when I was in my early twenties, but I never really cared that much about Morrissey. I just thought he was funny and amazing. Morrissey actually dropped an album like right at the top of the pandemic. And so uh, my ex like boyfriend at the time uh, sent me like a song off uh, the newest album. I'm not a dog on a chain that was called Jim Jim Falls. And I went like, I was like, ah, like, this is the best song. I don't know if you guys know that one, but it's like really awful. <laughs> so I feel like that's a good almost entry point to talk about like four core music or something. Cause it was just so like the whole album is just like, but that's what I like about Morrissey is like, he's like saying really awful kind of stuff to people while being like, ha 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 ha. What do you mean by awful? It's telling people go kill yourself if you feel like it so it's not like he's obviously not um a positive type mm-hmm. he gets really <laughs> spicy lyrics like rude sassy type of stuff usually i don't know the song you're talking about but yeah i have a clip of uh russell brand interviewing morris yeah. i thought it was really funny and i think like yeah, I, I, don't it, but, um, I like this one because like to me it was what was interesting about it was that it highlighted sort of the differences of the four and seven frustration type and how they actually deal with each other or just people mm-hmm. how they um interact with people so the brands is seven wing six and um morris he's a four wing three so we got two frustration types so we got the zany one and the yeah. negative one so okay situation i recall once you refused to answer a question about your cat a question posed by my mother, not by Melvin Bragg or a coruscating it's, it's interviewer. It's gone down in history as one of the great political stompers of all time, hasn't it? <laughs> really? I mean, uh, but often, Russell, if you answer a question indirectly, mm. it can be more interesting than if you answer a question directly. And all I look for in, shall we say, other musicians' sings is that they say or do something different. Just say something different. Give a different response. Say something different. Use different words. I don't want to always hear the same replies, even if it's, um, we made the album in Switzerland and it was 
Oh, right. I don't want to. <laughs> you don't want to hear. I don't want to hear when you say that kind of thing. I find it very, very tedious. Mm. Also, I think that when you make a record. So, like, that's kind of interesting. That's like already he's like projecting that kind of for ego thing of wanting to be different and like projecting it onto other people in some way because he is a social type. I guess we should have said that at the start, like, or did we? I don't oh, know. Yeah. 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 More so we sell press four wing three. Yeah, and already he's like, I just want to hear interesting things. Don't bore me. <laughs> right. W which is like the assumption there is that everyone else is boring. Record, an album. It has to be a discovery for the person that listening to it. So you don't want to pat everything out and say, this was that, this was definite. That's how it happened. And that's what you should feel and that's what you should like or dislike. It's personal discovery. Yeah. Okay, so it's quite deliberate. So you're deliberately opaque as not to prejudice people's no, enjoyment I, of your work. No, I, I wouldn't say opaque, no, but I don't want to be pat. Mm. And I don't want to be formatted. Every reply is formatted, even though obviously I know the answer. Yeah. I don't want to be formatted. Although being obtuse does become a format of its own, eventually. Yes, but it's a wonky format. It is a wonky you can't format. chase it. No, no you can't trace it. That's quite true. When you listen to your earlier work, what, what kind of relationship do you have with it? Um, the earlier stuff is um, a bit frightening. Mm. A bit frightening, because it was all born, born out of desperation. Nothing else. To be successful? To be something, yes. And so I can I can hear all the despair and the the struggle and the Russell. <laughs> well, did you have a sense of entitlement? R U S T O E. Okay. You see, you can't even say the word Russell without <laughs> dragging it back to himself. There's all manner of bits of language that I've claimed for my own. Hey, <laughs> prior to your prior to becoming a notorious, did you have a sense of entitlement? Did you feel that, that somehow there had been a mistake at the factory? Well, there was definitely a mistake at the factory, but I didn't feel, I, I didn't have the modern notion of um, I must have fame and um, I must lead a very special life. But right. I thought there was a lot to flee from. Yeah, wh wh what was that? Well, the reality of life, the life I had in Manchester. Manchester, Manchester. When you was growing, like when you were growing up, it was bleak for you. It was very bleak for everybody, I think. Yes. Yeah, there were very different times, very different times. So I think that's kind of interesting because when I was watching some Morrissey stuff, I kept seeing overlap with Nine, even though I'm pretty sure he's one fixed. Uh, where there, I think this is partly also where like the four and nine stuff gets convoluted because it, like the way he's talking about it, like oh, I want to escape my like miserable life or something. I feel like a lot of nines relate to that, but he's yeah, like but glamorizing it. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. But also, like I also have like a little bit like from seven. You know, like the uh, want to escape and yeah. I don't know that normal also, life is like not good enough. I feel like that can be a common theme of any type, really, but. I see him, I do see him though coming from an image place, like looking back and seeing struggle and desperation. Um, yeah, but he's pointing out this is like for everybody who, who grew up there. So it was like yeah. shit everybody, everywhere there. So yeah, maybe so, social pointer. I don't know. Yeah, and a six fix too. Yeah. I yeah, six that, for sure. Um, so like comparing to nine of escapism is like escaping into something. I think of it as you're escaping into something rather he's just getting away from how terrible, like he's more focused on pushing away the shit. Right. Yeah. Um, and everything, yeah, everything is yeah. shit basically. And I would say, and also, I mean, not you don't escape into an image, but you kind of transform into an image. And I kind of see a transformational type of point of view in what he's talking about. It's like transforming from the shit and the misery into something that feels more aligned like to who you really are and what you want to be as a person. And so I can see how his escapism is coming from more of an image place. Of being somebody. 
yeah being being who he wants something. to be and not who the defective person he feels like he was born as yeah and fake at the factory yeah <laughs> I also Fine. think like with social self pres because it is um, contra flow, which, you know, I'm not like very well versed in the instincts or anything, but what I have observed, which is sort of interesting is there's this thing called away motivation, um, which I don't know, you might know about that Emily a little bit too, but it's like, it is sort of, I think part of the social self pres mix where there is a pushing away anyways, but it's probably way worse with like four like or like hexad or something like just because um it is sort of it's the people hating stacking kind of like I know you you're not a people hater Thomas but it's sort of the always like looking out and just being like Ugh, like depending yeah. on probably your core type like I noticed it's sixes and yeah four for sure you wouldn't think I was a people hater do you social are... self pres is a very um God, what was I was going to say it's like a very I'll negative back, it can be very negative um and oh. having a lot of antipathy towards the world in some ways um and you're you know you're trying to find your place in it but um social self pres is just like not the even though they can come across in some types as very warm and and peopley sometimes, it is a pretty um, that secondary self pres with that block after the social just makes it a lot more um, a little bit removed, like removed, like, like, more removed and abstracted. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you tend to see yourself relative to social things in a more abstracted way than like say social sexual. Like how does that resonate for you, Emily, as in social self pres nine? Cause it's the most mergiest. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, I think I am like warm and like openly loving towards people I've already like accepted into my circle. Whereas like when I'm out in public hanging out, you know, like just saying, I don't know, on the bus or when you go to a bar, I just like kind of shut out everybody else like so they're interesting I like people watching and stuff but I don't I hate making small talk with like waiters or things like that because I'm just like I'm not here for you <laughs> like I'm here like for myself or the people that I'm with so I think there's like some kind of switch that happens like when I'm um with my family or close friends I'm like way more open-hearted um, so kind of, there is like a wall I think people have to like get past or that I have to, you know, break down myself, um, depending on like the context. Sometimes I feel like the ball's in their court to do it. Like they have to prove something, <laughs> but other times it's like, oh, I need to like work on relaxing my, that boundary. Yeah. Even though I'm a social seven, I'm pretty like walled. And yeah, that's funny because it's completely different for me because I will like, you know, actively like search for people that I can like you know I don't know I like search, look for eye contact and stuff like that so it's completely different you know I I'm like more open than you are yeah but, yeah that could be like the sin floating or maybe yeah yeah it's weird because like when I was first type social self prize I was like how is this possible when I fucking hate like so many people and I like being alone but and then like engaging with you it's like you just seem to have like a million friends and you're social blind so that is a pretty weird thing but I do think like social self prize kind of makes you more like wary of social because yeah. you're focus so it's more like you're more like potentially actively disgusted in that realm if you have like the maybe the disgusted fixes or whatever. Yeah, you see, see on very different times to such a degree that you didn't really ever hear music anywhere. It's very hard to hear music. People didn't play music in their cars. There wasn't music on in films and on television programs. So music was a very peculiar thing. And if you were interested in music, you were quite peculiar. Very not like now when everybody makes music and everybody makes their own CDs at home and everybody listens to music everywhere all the time. But uh, back then, 
in the 70s, it was very hard to hear music and it was impossible to hear good music. I see, so you know, it was. And to be deliberately sought out. It was a peculiar thing and it was a very peculiar um, uh, desire to make music. So you're like, is it then that you kind of sought escape through music? Uh, yes, yes. That, that was the only way, there was nothing else. Yes, I watched television and I liked films and so forth, but it was very distant, whereas music was within me. Right, sort of visceral. Well, you know. This year, I do, oh, I like this song. We are here, of course, to promote your, uh, the forthcoming release of your new album, Years of Refusal. Yes. Why is it called that? <laughs> oh, come on. Oh, don't complain about every question. I know it's a... But, but you interview lots of people, don't you? Yes, I do a lot of interviews. And they, 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 they're pleased and they say you're good at it. And I'm brilliant. You go home and you feel very fulfilled. Very fulfilled. Yes, yes. Blase almost. <laughs> <laughs> so I am good at interviews. This is just getting into it, softening you up. Softening. Yeah. yeah. That's what I'm doing. Mm. So you've got this thing, years of refusal. Are you happy about it? Come on. I'm very, you, you must participate. Happy. I'm very, very happy. Yes. I mm. think it's a fantastic recording. Mm. I think it's great. I've heard it. It is really good. I enjoyed it. Spectacular, lovely atmosphere you created. Very grand. What was it that was for? It was like this. <laughs> Eerie. Do you have any canned laughter? <laughs> You're not going to need that. This place will be alive with ripples of laughter before you know it. This, yeah. this desert will sing out with peals of we're joy. Where are the pods? <laughs> <laughs> They'll be along. As a young man, what on earth is happening? You had some unusual haircuts before you, uh, uh, this quiff that you worn so well for mm. many a decade. Mm. Such as? I've seen a photograph of you with something not dissimilar to the adornment that I currently wear. I think it was. Yeah, I think it was very dissimilar. It looked to me like you were expressing your affection for the New York Dolls out no. the top of your head. No, no, not at all. <laughs> it was a bit shaggy, certainly. Mm. But it wasn't like yours. Well, no. Yeah, who cuts your hair? Occasionally, just drifters, hobos, chancers, mm. errant children, wanderers, folks with stars in their eyes, mm. empty bellies, but dreams. Mm. Now, this lady called Nicola, she's from I Essex. guess that. <laughs> she's from, she from Raynham, a girl from Raynham. Obviously. So, like, what I thought was really interesting when I was watching this, uh, when I was looking for Morrissey clips, um, was how they're both doing frustration with each other. It's yeah. like it's like Morrissey just keeps pushing away and just getting more and more annoyed with Russell and then just kind of flipping things okay um, back on him. And then Russell is like purposely trying to like provoke him and yeah. be like a little bit of a shit. Yeah. I love it. It's like the assertive positive energy of Russell Brand. He's like, you must participate. Like this is what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> but then they're kind of like taking digs at each other like with the hair stuff it, I feel like too because sevens like kind of push into people's images when you start when you see someone maybe you relate to the shanti it's like um someone has like a facade up it's like you just kind of want to like rip it open and just like oh, yeah I can totally like feel that you know if like somebody's like doing something fake it's like no no you know it's like I don't know, energy is off or something. Yeah, and I want yeah. to, you know, like prick through yeah. it or something. But for three, four mixtures, fake is natural. <laughs> Artificial yeah. is everything. Like that's what's normal. <laughs> but I totally get it. I actually think Russell comes across as like so much more the guy I'd rather hang out with in these videos. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like um, it's like fake. a difference between somebody who's like like fake, like you know, like fake fake, or like true to themselves, but also putting on like an image. Yes, you yes, know, and that's like the definite uh, image types are true to themselves, but that's like it's so hard to put into words. Like after a while, when you study the Enneagram, you can just like learn to read the head energy versus the image energy. But mm -hmm. like the in image energy does give that like vibe of like putting on airs and stuff like that, no matter what the type. Um, 
but even if they're being totally genuine and true to themselves, it's just like the way that they act like gives that vibe. Um, but mm -hmm. I can see how it, and it, it does make them easy targets, I think, for types like sevens and stuff to like <laughs> poke at and other types. I think it was David Gray that said it's like people are always witnessing people witnessing themselves or I probably yeah it's like that. mirror mm -hmm. it's like you see you're seeing yourself in a mirror like looking back at yourself and reflecting inward and outward at and all times it's worse with social too eh? like, oh with social no social is also a mirror in a way so like with so doubling. that's why Double three mirror. is but like social three with social like three and relating all three of those have somewhat of that mirror effect Mm -hmm. and that's why like social threes can be like the biggest psychos on earth because they're like in this like glass world this mirrored world that they're living in that's kind of cool and, like i noticed i also like i kind of studied my mom because she's a two and three and once i realized like sort of how the image center works sort of through observing her it is like someone said it's like they're always like it's like they're trying to sell you something almost and mm. So it's like when I see like the two wing three, especially it is like, I'm the best nurturer. Like I'm the most loving and it's very interesting. And then you're watching four wing three and it's like, I'm the most misunderstood. I'm the most, <laughs> like tortured. I'm the most like deep, like I'm the most in interest. It's different. This will come up in a little bit in a, in a few minutes, but this is the part that really sparked my, um, where I had like a, like a, oh my God, a lot of aha yeah. because, um, because I was, I was having trouble for a while, like seeing the difference between four and seven in myself in some ways where I was like, well, how do you tell which one is the core? And I could really see it in this where it's like fours and sevens are both trying to be the most interesting, but for different like reasons and how they do it is different. And it's like, he, like Russell Brand is just like, unconsciously being more interesting because he's doing the seven thing of like where it's uh you know we're just like we know like weird all these weird things mm -hmm. um, it's like that sort of thing yeah and then um or or because we're also like less image I think um tightly gripping that we're just playing fast and loose and like anything could happen and then the four is trying to be more interesting but it's more mm -hmm. like constructed like self-aware yeah. it's, it's much more self-conscious self yeah that's that's yeah, yeah. that's right. yeah for, for like the the seven it's like it's less um loaded you know like the the thing is just like they don't think about it and like the four it's like more like controlled because they have to you know have to get it right across to the other person oh that's, yes that's absolutely yeah. it because then they get more specific like wait you're not seeing what i'm trying to like show you yeah, you can't understand this ever yeah <laughs> like that. yeah i guess that's yeah. probably the hell of the four with the three because mm -hmm. the three and the two want to show you like they want you to see what they want like whatever but then mm -hmm. the four is like you you can't understand them but also they want you to know yeah <laughs> yeah it's like the hell of three and four and also social because you're inherently misunderstood, you're different, you're not, you know, but you want other people to see that, <laughs> but you don't want to make it super obvious that like you want them to see that. So you're like, mm -hmm. and you're con in, you're, they're conflicted within themselves. So they want it, but they also don't want it. They want it, but they see the fakeness and the artifice with it. So it's like moving towards, but also moving against at the yeah. same time. Half the age, snicker snacking away with scissors, busy scissors, etc. Um, I don't expect the answer to be that interesting. I thought you were just going to say, you know, Samantha's and Romford. Though I'll come up with something, and if you ask me a question, I'm, I feel obliged to provide a way out. But you're happy with your career and your life, like you're very. I'm just sorry. I'm just going to pause it there too, because like Morris, he's noticing that he's interesting. And then it, I think it kind of escalates where he feels competitive almost with Russell about the interesting part. So <laughs> this yeah. I love this video because there's like some weird interplay happening with the two types. Yeah, you can always, it's uh, for, I mean, there's many reasons why you can, 
it's easy to tell the wing on a four usually, but like the competitiveness is one of those reasons. Like it totally comes out in four wing threes. Like no matter what they may think to themselves, they don't hide it. <laughs> he's also like testing him. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. He's like also like testing him and like trying to to poke at him to I don't know to make him crack or something, you know? He's kind of successful too, because this is actually a really good interview, I feel like for Morrissey, because it does kind of start exposing a lot of those ego mechanisms, like yeah. um, where he walls it up in a lot of other interviews. And this one, Russell just keeps pushing until he gets something out of him. Yeah, that's good. I like it. Yeah, because he used to be searching and quite rampant sort of on the edge. Yeah. And now, my personal antagonism was related to a sense of entitlement. I thought there'd been so, some terrible mix-up, and I actually don't believe you when you say that you don't think of that with your own with your own life. Because I sort of felt like Frazier. I thought, oh, really? I'm sure I'm brilliant. Where well, that's my money, you know. Like, so that it really wound me up. And I, and, and I can't, I can't imagine. Like, I was, I was got interviewed by someone the other day, and they said that that um, you know. But you then thought you were brilliant and where's my money because you could do what? Um, well, actually, just see, I formulated see. that sentence. Stand up comedy, Morrissey. Smugness. <laughs> Smugness arrived before we did. Smugness has been perched here under this temporary chaise lounge that was hastily whipped in to replace a chair because these principles meant his thumb could be on leather. Sake. There's some leather chairs over there. Lovely they are. With broken hearts. Crying their eyes out because of him. Uh, well, what I wanted to say is, how did that happen, this self-realisation? What are the component parts of it? How did this uh, beautification of self, how did it occur? Well, uh, it occurred because even though I didn't have any ingredients for uh, pop, rock, stardom, however you wish to term it, I took all the ingredients that didn't work and I pulled them together and suddenly this thing emerged, yeah. being me, and nothing was cliched. And at the time, everybody who made it in music was very cliched. It's still the case, really. Yeah. But occasionally you see subversive things slipping through now. Um, but in those- That is so far. <laughs> oh, it's okay. just, yeah, classic. Like, it's not very, there's nothing out there that's very good. <laughs> Yeah, everything is cliche, and I just like mm -hmm. took all the mm -hmm. weird parts and turned them into something new because I'm, I'm so you know not cliche like <laughs> all the rest. Well, uh, also, isn't Russ? Did we talk about Russell's tri fix? Is he? He's a nine fix, right? He seems like a nine wing eight fix, at least to me. And I, I feel like if that's true, thing. like you're seeing. You can also, in addition to the core type differences, totally see like the more nine fix, like childlike, like loosey goosey versus like the more, a much more adult one fix. Like one fix I feel like has such a adult like quality yeah. to it. And mm -hmm. um, Morrissey just seems so much more like, almost like an adult talking to a child in the yeah. way he's seeing it, like. Yeah, it's true. That's true. I Russ think I think his uh, his wing is eight. I think it's seven yeah. wing eight, and then DJ. You know, like a yeah. Seven, I, he nine, seems seven, like a nine seven. wing eight fix to me. I've never looked into him before, so this is like my first take. But he seems like a nine wing eight fix, which is kind of like the most like roll with the punches, like kind of easy going oh. energy. And then compared to the one fix, which is so much more like high strung, yeah, um, strange adult yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you seem i don't know i feel like morris or uh russell brand might be seven wing six but it's more just based on um uh his like new direction oh yeah in with his channel or oh, seven wing but, six, six wing seven are the conspiracy theory people like i'm one of them <laughs> too and i'm like i so that's why i'm like leaning to seven wing six <laughs> yeah, yeah. well it's also be. he seems like like actually seven wing eight can be much often they're much more serious they're not yeah. always but they're often much more serious and he has that like loosey laughy goofy quality that's more akin to the set that seven wing six space but mm -hmm. i just think his gut though feels like nine wing eight 
I think uh, you know, Seven Wings yeah, is I think you're right. more annoying too. Like I think <laughs> yeah. you know, we are kind of like not annoying, obviously Shanti, but our type, I notice it more with guys that are Seven Wings Six where I'm like, oh my God, tone it down. Like <laughs> <laughs> I love Seven Wings Sixes. So I have like a soft spot, but <laughs> I think that, yeah, you can see Russell Brand so like fluid um you know he's like mm -hmm. moves a lot and yeah you know the time when he's playing with his hair and then I don't know if we'll get to it at the end of the video where he's like pro pro like does he get down on one knee or something like that and so <laughs> you can also see the the sexual instinct at play because yeah. he's like really trying to um right to push his buttons but like in yeah, a playful that's way true. yeah that's true it's like someone with higher sx <laughs> also and someone with sx last like yeah, that dynamic is at least very familiar to me as an SX last. Like I know what it's like to be in yes, more like more shoes. provoking. Like, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. you just like almost don't even know what to do. Like <laughs> that is a good point, like Emily, because it is almost like I feel like you the seven, um, seven wing six maybe specifically can tap into that like charm sort of where they're like being awful, but they're also like trying to romance you even if it's just like a <laughs> romancing where it's like come on like have a little fun like you did to get us on this call right I was oh, like I it? can't say no pour a glass of bubbly come on the call I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. then there's that seven rage too because like and you see it a little, as we will watch a bit more but it's like then when Russell's not getting what he wants, then that like seven more aggressive part starts to come up where it's like, all right, I'm going to fucking push a little even fucking harder because you're not giving yeah. me what I want. And like Morrissey's like, you're not giving me what I want, which is like you mirroring back to me that I'm this spectacular, interesting, <laughs> serious, like wonder. <laughs> yeah. Do you feel a sense of personal obligation towards animals? And animals? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I certainly do. And why do I? Yeah, because they need help. Do they? Yes, they look to us for protection and they look to us for love and understanding. And a lot of the people do lead them into the abattoir and chop their heads off, and, which I think is dreadful. Yeah, I think it's very, very cruel. And I'm always on the side of the animal. The animals. No matter what the debate is, animals yes. come first. And if you go into an abattoir, which I know you do, most evenly daily. <laughs> I take a daily trip to an abattoir just to unwind, looking for friends. Keep my mind off things. <laughs> it's uh, unpleasant and it's, uh, it's no different than the Holocaust. Almost oh, the things like that. But it's true. It's exactly the same thing. It really, oh, really is. It isn't. I don't think I'm a vegetarian, as you know, and uh, uh, no small part due to awareness raised by you and your music and the stand you've taken. Well, then that's enough. Let's talk about something else. All right, then. <laughs> why, why be obstreperous about it? Why <laughs> being obstreperous? Especially with things that much to you in the first place. Uh, I mean, why fight with yourself? <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the point? I'm here. I'm here. Yeah, I've got you to quarrel with. Okay. Well, protection of animals it is it's just common sense. I mean, it's not, really, it's not an intellectual debate. It's so base. Don't you think? Yes, I completely agree with you. I think, you know, how we treat the vulnerable is how we, do, how we define ourselves as, as a species. Well, now you'd like to talk about something completely different. I'd like to talk a little bit about, I think that's important what you were saying earlier about the realisation of, your, of yourself and, and how that occurred. Because I think that's one of the most important things about you is the fact that the things that are not typically heroic, it became in your hands and through your music heroic. Now, how can I turn that into a question? You know what I just like noticed? Sorry, and I'll just keep pressing pause, whatever, who cares? Um, was that I, maybe this is a hex ad thing, or maybe it's not, maybe it's four and seven. I'm not sure, but they're they're talking to each other, but they're not, you know what I mean? Like, and I've actually realized this in Discord conversations where other people have gotten frustrated especially with sevens where it's almost like you're having your own conversation with yourself. And I'm wondering if like fours are doing that too, or you're sort of having a conversation with yourself and you're, they just happen to be sort of in a conversation, but it's really not like a back and forth. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me. It also makes sense to me from, at least from Morrissey's point of view, from the social self pres perspective, one of the ways I knew I was social self pres from the beginning was I'd somebody back on the EIDB had written like 
SOSP has this like quality of like they're talking to you through a blow horn or something like they're just yelling things out into the world and like oh, not engaging because they lack that SX so like even if they're talking to you they're not like engaging deeply directly with you and they're just like broadcasting stuff out there and mm -hmm. so I think at least from his perspective like Russell's trying to get more into him like from that SX way like and get more out of him but he's like I just have this message I'm just like putting it out there broadcasting like outward energy I could be like I'm talking to you but it's like I may as well be talking through a blow horn to an audience <laughs> Yeah, but he's also like like saying like three times or something like uh no let's talk about something else now let's talk about something <laughs> else about the animal stuff and he's like like shutting it down because he mentioned like the holocaust and i don't know it's like maybe bad for his image or something you know because he's he was like i don't know it was like a weird but tense moment i saw him do it when when russell flattered him so that was kind of interesting mm -hmm. where then he was like, all right, let's change the topic when he was like, it's because of you that I like blah, blah, blah. And so mm -hmm. I wonder if that is like a, a for social self yeah. potential thing. Where they I definitely see it as social self press. Like there's often times like even me as like a now lapse, which I'm now feeling so guilty about pescatarian. It's like there's some topics you get on that you feel passionately about, but you're like, this isn't the time or place for me to like go on and on about like my views. So like, I'm just gonna say quickly what I think and then let's move on. You know, like let's not get into, because this is something I could get into a protracted debate about, but I'm not trying to talk about that right now. So let's move on to the next point. Yeah, agreed. Like that officious, like, so SP, Essex last way, like let's, okay, I've said my piece, let's move on to the next okay. point. <laughs> like broadcasting things but then there's a certain point where they're like that's enough or something yeah yeah it's like yeah. I don't want to I could get into this in great detail but I'm not trying to have this debate with you right now mm -hmm. knowing myself I could debate for like ever on this point but like I'm not trying to so let's just move on yeah, yeah. I think too, I know I'm right because you're like so yeah as nine wing one right Emily yeah uh-huh I feel like it's the more like to me nine wing one social self pres is the more elegant sort of it's the maybe the most elegant of the social self -pres. <laughs> it is like I will like express some of my distaste for you but it's because like I've reached like a fucking tipping point like <laughs> so yeah. maybe, like broadcasting but it's more like restrained broadcast yeah um, it's like kind of leaks out in maybe passive aggressive ways sometimes too <laughs> yeah you never could. No, not the gun, but it's kind of, it's kind of just a statement. But, well, some people are art, you know. Some people are art, just naturally. And they could be total failures, but they are art. And some people can never be art. And also some people can come to represent something, some structure of art, even though they have none of the ingredients that one associates with that thing. Well, uh, can you give me no. examples of, do you, oh, sure. do you encounter people, who do you encounter where you think that they are? Uh, uh, well, there's lots of people things. in film, for example, who are not attractive, but they can, they convince you that they are because they are so talented. Because of their way. Who? Oh, well, certain people. Go on. I don't want to oh, name do names. No, no, no. I mean, there are certain people who are not attractive, but you are drawn to them. And they're maybe even doing something that's quite nasty or mm. naughty. But they have a certain aura about them when you're attractive to them. Quentin Crisp said charisma is the ability to influence without logic. It's good, isn't it? Yes. So that like, is quite good. Yeah, it is good. Mm -hmm. You're a charismatic man, of course. That's why on that occasion at the roundhouse, I was so willing to go straight up on the stage. Well, you saw a stage and you were just begging for me to get off it. And as soon as I did, <clears throat> off we went. Morris has got a bad throat one day performing at the roundhouse. I naively, in retrospect, went up to go, oh, Morris, you might be coming back on stage. Uh, he got a sore throat, only to be greeted with missiles <laughs> from the crowd. This was just a harsh lesson for me. Listen, mm. but the lesson being that not every audience is the same. And just because you can be 
a wow and a whiz on one stage, it doesn't mean you can trot over to another stage and be a wow and a whiz. No, you can't. You might be hated on that stage. You might be struck by missiles. <laughs> David Wagon is just hit by a bottle top. He's never been the same since. But then he wasn't the same before. <laughs> I think he's the same. <laughs> good feeling that. It was quite good. I like that Russell's brought in the audience. <laughs> <laughs> like, I feel like that's a seven move too, eh? Like that's like, yeah. like maybe yeah. something but, tips again with with some social in there where it's like I'm not getting what I want from this person, so I'm gonna get it like outside. But I feel though, like for us, we just got a lot out of Morrissey, like that recognizing different audiences and different stages is like for the three, four, four, three mix, like so critical. Like you recognize all the time how you're like received by different audiences how you have to adapt to different audiences and like you can't just always be exactly you have to adapt like even a core four like who is very kind of set in their ways with that three wing they are recognizing that their audiences differ and what they want differs and what you have to deliver to be successful differs and also him like even if he was like ready to leave the stage or whatever like him getting mad that Russell like kind of hijacked like yeah, yeah. Like no don't see him must light. I will come back <laughs> yeah that's so funny because there's a uh my ex told me this funny story about Morrissey that he was touring with uh, David Bowie and they were playing the same stage together like it was part of their tour and fuck I don't remember I wrote it down. Oh my god. Oh uh, no, I'm gonna um, go crazy right now because I've been want I, I wanted to bring this up in our um call, but I didn't know if we could bring up Bowie, but there's a Bowie Morrissey duet sort of when they're singing like uh I can't remember what the song is called, but if you YouTube it, it's like the first thing that comes up when you search Morrissey Bowie. But I think it so shows the difference between like the four three the four wing three and the three wing four. But anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's okay, I was like looking up because I was like, fuck, what did he say? But he said that Morrissey, like, so they were playing together. And then, so it was like Morrissey would go first and then Bowie would take over. Yes, yes, Bowie comes in and steals the show. Well, and so one day Morrissey decided to just not show up to their concerts anymore. And apparently he just, like, didn't even say anything and just stopped showing up to their concerts. Oh, no, so to me, I'm like, okay, that's interesting from the perspective of nine versus four, because nines are known for ghosting, right? But like no nine, I don't think would do that. That's like such a like, a, like a yeah. sort of like, you're just yeah. like, you've disgusted me. I don't like what you're doing. You just that's it yeah done. like cool. yeah no we my friend and I we use this video actually to help show the difference between a four because at the time when Bowie was commonly typed as four wing three we looked at this video oh, where they're doing a duet and Morrissey's singing and then Bowie comes on the stage like kind of part way into the song and he just radiates this like huge assertive energy compared to Morrissey and like really takes over the show, but also he's a sex SO, so yeah, that will I'm probably eclipse so is he. So it's yeah. a mix of the stacking and the type, but Bowie really takes over the show and just like radiates this much larger presence, but also due to being assertive. Um, so I could see how that would annoy Morrissey because like Bowie comes on and then suddenly it's like the audience comes alive and is like really into it. But I don't, yeah, I wouldn't see a nine just like being like mad about that and ghosting, but I could see a four doing that. Um, well, that's what I meant more is like the sort of the differences of how that might manifest is that the nine is like, probably, they would probably keep going and just start shutting down or something and then not want to talk well, well the nine probably also wouldn't care as much right like the four oh, that's three, a good point the image type is like this is like i'm here to be the star like <laughs> and then bowie's coming in and taking over like as the bigger star yeah. um <clears throat> so i like see that as a big envy issue mm -hmm. where like his envy takes over he then decides you know no no 
like not doing this no <laughs> i bet that's the eighth time you're saying it. it's not actually it's the first time that's one of the things about me i'm always coming up with new and brilliant and original things that's part of my nature right now let's drift back into you can i ask you some questions that people might want to hear the answer to oh, yeah. well, i'm like, gonna i would like those questions <clears throat> why should people know everything anyway you don't have to answer them do I mean, you what's the mystery to you there must be something in you no to you oh to me yes the mystery to me I mean, well, do, do people know everything about you I don't know anything, I don't think, actually, because the things that are revealed are art. See, like, because I deal in transparency and being confessional, but the, but the exposure that I yield is actually it's, it's in itself further duplicity. I don't reveal anything of any actual significance. These things are just, uh, oh, these are outsourced anecdotes now. All these things that seem actually quite in, intimate, I've just, they seem miles away from me. I can't remember the question, no, I <laughs> Nor can I. I don't know what the answer was. <laughs> it's a lot of hullabaloo. Mm. So, like, this is one of the things that is uh, endlessly fascinating as well about your uh, lyrics. I think, how come, uh, like, sort of, it's a good how you can make prosaic and mundane things sound all poetic? What's the what's the art to that? How can you it, make it's an art? Yeah, lots of people try it and they fail. They don't. I mean, they try to sing about the everyday and um, lack of choice and the traps, and it just sounds ridiculous. Yeah, but it's the sound of the voice. Do you think? I so? believe it's the sound of the voice. Yeah. Mm, what so you think uh, even people is you, if you've got any are there any covers of your work that you approve of well that's a completely different question but i think the, the singing voice mm. if i can ignore your question please do it's been a, doing it since i met it can be a caress so here's like one thing that i would say probably about four wing three as well <laughs> yes i don't think they want their stuff to be covered but they might be like yay but like but, not like um I don't know if you guys have heard that story about Prince where because Sinead O'Connor's cover of Nothing Compares to You was like obviously it was like a jaw drop or tear like I literally can't watch that video without crying or listen to the song crying. <laughs> and apparently uh he invited her over to his house and like traumatized her he like became like abusive and like terrorized her and she ran like fleeing from his mansion well i would also say one thing that really comes out there is that's pretty um signature of the three four range is just like his utter pretentiousness like it's the sound of the voice it's the crest of the voice only i can deliver these mundane lyrics in like the right way it's just like so effing pretentious I like, like but that's just like a trap that three four mixes fall into all the time and i was like trying to look for videos um where a four is being more open-hearted or um loving or just kind so because i found videos of morrissey actually being very nice to fans mm -hmm. oh yeah that's kind of telling in itself right that he's nice to yeah I, I just i disagree with that whole that fours are just hateful yeah. um stereotype that's not true and i i hate the stereotype that fours are purely hateful because it's just not true <laughs> I, like, I think it's just around certain things like yeah um, but as people like overall like no, I, I think force can be just as kind as like any other type. But I think they maybe like fall into frustration, maybe like more often. But I think with like people that they care about or if they mm -hmm. like feel safe, then, then they can be very hot, warm and, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I th I've experienced that too. It seems like... Um, there's, I mean, yes, they can be warm, but also it, there's this quality of um, being, it's like their their heart is on their sleeve. And so th when they direct their, that heart energy, it's very, yeah. um, like when they choose to let you see that, yeah. then it's like totally open flow. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. One of my favorite energies is whether it's like a two connecting to four or it's a four connecting to two. It's when that energy mixes and you have like the kind of all that um, depth. I don't want to say depth because like as if twos don't have depth, but like all that baggage of four, but with like that war giving you like that generosity of the two it's like they're being generous 
with sharing themselves. Yes, like that is yes, the sharing gift, themselves. Is letting exactly, you that's what it is. Great way to put it. Because it is like, I, even though I only have it as a fix, it's like, it feels like, like this naked, like, like it feels like almost borderline disgusting on some level where it's like <laughs> I'm sharing this thing with you and if you don't like treat it as like a fucking sacred thing then I'm like that's it like that's like yeah like force maybe like in, in general I think that they are like if they like show themselves that they're like you know it's it's a vulnerable thing you mm -hmm. know it's like it's like um it's it's scary because you know you you don't also don't right. want to be like seen and placed and understood, but also you want to but if they like mm -hmm. don't choose to do it you have to like really see them and listen yeah. to them and then if you like betray their trust you know then then it's over then then yeah then the frustration yeah. comes and, and that's part of the intrigue of social fours is like that withdrawn like very like this is you know guarding their kind of like sacred space type but like being compelled to put it out socially and making them like social fours are really compelled to make themselves vulnerable in many ways in order to like fulfill their instinctual drives and i don't know i just find social four like pretty fascinating on that level because you get this like big dose of vulnerability from them if you like know what you're looking for um mm -hmm. and it's like controlled vulnerability it's like yes controlled see, like, yeah they the... take ownership of their yeah. narrative yes for sure because it's like what you see more you're... is you doing i know that like the heart is the shame center and so we've had some conversations around this sort of in the discords and stuff it's like like it is like this weird thing um where I guess every person experiences it because each person has a shame center, but it's like when you share yourself and then someone like misinterprets it or almost, I don't even know, almost engages with it even, it's like makes you feel grotesque on some, it like, makes me feel that way with my like four fix where it's like, oh, like, like it's just like this horrifying for a core type. It must be like <laughs> nonstop horror. Yeah. <laughs> So what would the what would be an outcome that wouldn't result in that discussed response if you are like opening or like maybe sharing yourself or something that you um like identify strongly with something that's special like is there a way that no. that could ever play out and there not be a disgust response I think it's like different probably for it's like so min, like the minutia like the minute details have to be so perfect I think <laughs> thing that it's like uh, impossible it's like striking the lottery yeah sometimes it's like if I just get no response from someone that actually feels mm -hmm. better it's like oh that person just ignored what I said and on some level I actually feel weirdly like safer or like yeah because they didn't it. get like, you I, yeah it's like, like you're oh. just incomprehensible which like of course you are because you're <laughs> and you know <laughs> you're on another plane right what I used to explain <laughs> as like a social three four is like the way I would at least used to until I could like whatever I feel like I grew a bit as a person but I I felt like I would feel like if you don't if I share myself or something and you don't love me it's like or what the hell me? is wrong with me yeah. I'm so messed up like shame what's wrong with me but if you do still seem like you love me or whatnot it's like what the hell is wrong with you? Cause I'm so fucked up. Why would you like me? Like, <laughs> so it's either like, what the hell is wrong with me? Or what the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. like almost like Goldilocks. It's like going into the house and it's like, this one's too hot, this one's too cold. It's like, yeah. it's, it's like you, like another person can't engineer. I don't think the right porridge temperature. It's like, <laughs> yeah. There is no just right. I think Bizu mentioned that social force, they have this, you said they have like a compulsion to um, maybe put themselves out there in the social sphere, which kind of sets them up for this like 
frustration mm-hmm. um, cycle. But actually, I'm I'm thinking about how like in social blind cases, there isn't this like neuroticism around social. So I think they're maybe even more open and more likely to yeah. um, well, be vulnerable because they they're not they don't yes. consider all of like the the ways that social could be like. So that's a great it. point. Um, and I think, so I think a lot of social fours, I would guess every social four wants to put themselves out there, but I don't think they all necessarily, I think they probably all do in their own way. Obviously they're not all becoming famous rock stars, right? Like, but um, I think they have, uh, the social four is also the one that can be the most likely to, I think become have like unhealthy reclusiveness where like you become reclusive, but not because you just like to be solitary and alone, but because you have too much shame of like putting yourself out there. But um, I think a lot of social force who are successful in, in whatever endeavors it is they're, they're going after is because they, they, build up the guts and the narrative of their and take over their own narrative and put put themselves out there and like own their shame um as opposed to whereas with social last fours that's not as big of a hurdle to overcome that makes total sense and i think part of the thing with social self-pres too is this feeling of kind of social purpose so i think like Mm -hmm. there's that sort of almost the portal out of it is like i'm funneling this into my art and so it doesn't matter what other people think because I'm fucking doing my thing and however Mm -hmm. that is your problem or whatever Mm -hmm. any three four social mix I think they'll all have some kind of journey from like the initial feeling of just like the shame about yourself and your defectiveness and all that's wrong but then because you're an image type, you build up in your mind, like your idealized self image and how you want to be seen. And like, you start owning the facets of your personality that you think are defective and disgusting, but you do start kind of selling them and putting them out there and kind of taking over that narrative. So you go from wanting to be like, hide all your shame and be like behind a veil to like okay I want to be seen but I want to be seen in this particular way that I now own because I've like owned all these pieces of my personality and constructed them into an image that I feel is in alignment with my ideals and my own aesthetics and then you want to be seen, but you want to be seen very accurately. And you can see that with Morrissey, she's like very particular about how mm. he's seen and all of that. And, and you will, will always get that. that in some like roundabout way where he was like, I took like what, what didn't work with music. I took all these pieces of what didn't work with music mm-hmm. and my own self or something. And I made like this thing that no right. one had done that wasn't cliche. Right, so exactly. You make totally yourself. And that's like the, I think the focus on like uniqueness is very prominent in like social fours and social three, four mixes um, because they, they take all their shame and they, analyze it and analyze it to death and then they gradually start to like grow and like own those different pieces of their personality and put it together into a unique persona or unique kind of individuality that they then put out there and they want to be recognized for that then that unique person that they are because it's like part of that whole that whole image transformation from like shame to like I want to be seen and like recognized as this unique person. The, um, I guess fours with different instinct stackings will just have shame play out more so in their dominant mm-hmm. instinct. So they're like neurotic about that thing. Hi, Morthy, my name uh, is Danielle. And I was wondering if um, your new band light lineup has greatly influenced the different sound we're hearing on your new album, Your Arsenal. Yes, it has, because um, up until this time, I've worked with uh, session musicians, not, well, friends who were mu- also musicians. 
and uh, this time it's uh, because it's a complete group it's a, a better it's a better situation <laughs> Hi, Marcy. My name is Jennifer. Hi. And I was wondering how you feel how, about the fans that fight and push their way to get on stage with you. Well, I'm, I'm very, very honored, to be honest. Yes. Lots of people do complain about them. I'm one of them. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> and, uh, like, security people always complain about it, but I don't really understand it. I, I, I don't really understand the complaints. I just think it's uh, the biggest compliment that anybody can pay. Yeah. He's being very cute right now. It's like you can kind of see mm -hmm. um, he's so uncomfortable. Like he's receiving compliments and he's engaging with them and he just like, he's like really yeah. around in his mouth and like but at the same time, I would just say he's a human being like, and he has a competent wing. Like I don't even think a four wing five. Like I've seen Johnny Depp engage with fans like as a four wing five and he's like warm towards them and like you know, smiles at them and laughs. Obviously as a like a seven fix and all of that, but that's why I don't like the stereotype of fours as being like so hateful and negative all the time because it's like they're still human beings who are like able to be like oh i'm at my job basically plus he has the th like like either wing on four is like a competent wing it's like i'm gonna handle this competently and like respond to them and like in a you know at least like with a modicum of propriety um uh, well, I, I don't even see it as like a competency thing really it's not like it's not that he's not being hateful it's that he's like actively being like open hearted, you know, it's like, yeah, but the quality the of, of being of like, because you could be um, sort of like a neutral, like um, you could, you could be um, like not rude and, you know, basically do what you need to so that you're not like looening like an asshole, but mm -hmm. he's like, like, that's not well, exactly what's happening but that's a very low bar for success i think like the bar for success would be you want to be received well especially with a three wing like but i don't also, think it's about let's, like, like not get it twisted with a, but with a three wing a four wing three let's not like as much as they don't want to be related to or like they're like oh you don't understand me whatever they also want to be like adored and admired and like whatever. Like I, I'm sorry, I just believe that like four and threes want to be adored and admired. Like even if they want to then push people away a little bit. Like I'm just going back to the sort of idea of conditional love with four, where it's like yes, like be my fan so long as you don't like overstep these specific like invisible boundaries. And if you do, it's betrayal because I but let you be me. I'd be more curious how he would react if he was like bombarded in the streets. Like there he's oh, yeah. on the talk show at his job. He's chosen to be there. He knows that he's going to get questions from the audience. He knows what to expect. He's like prepared. He's chosen to be open to it at that time. Like he consented to it yeah he's like he consent mm -hmm. he he decided like so it's all on his terms at that point in time it's not like oh he's in a in, in in a plane and like a fan like is sitting across the aisle and it's like oh my god can i get a selfie with you or something like that would be maybe more telling or something like yeah because he does let fans mob the stage but i still see that as like a weird forish thing in in the sense of that it's like a fuck you to the to the mm -hmm. maybe not the system but it's like he like he always yeah. made a point at least in the videos i watched of being like oh they don't the bodyguards don't want you up on the stage but i don't care like it's right <laughs> like pushing away the rebel the it's a little like, bit of the rebel like social yeah. four can have a kind of rebel sick. aspect that's a little like analogous to six in a way yeah because it's like almost like 
inherently counterphobic. Yeah, because it's kind of counters. It's counter in a way. I'm RC. I'm Dave. Uh, I was just wondering if your fear of the camera is diminishing these days. Fear of the camera. Yeah. Uh, yes, but only slightly. <laughs> That's all. Only slightly. Um, hi, I'm Cheryl, and um, I was just wondering, since you're so happy with your new band, do you ever miss being with the Smiths? Well, um... Uh... Sorry? What? 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 She made you ask. Uh, well, the answer to that question is that um, I think when groups are no longer with us, we become incredibly romantic about them, except in the case of the monkeys, perhaps. <laughs> to me, I think that if, if the Smiths and this had ex existed at the same time, if they'd existed at the same time, I would have preferred this. <laughs> Totally unwilling to be nostalgic about it. I love that. Um, I often hear of your influences in literature and older po poetry. Yes, but I do. wonder about your modern, <laughs> if you like more modern poetry like Anne Sexton or Sylvia Plath. Well, uh, yes, I, I like Anne Sexton. Um, but as far as Sylvia Plath is concerned, <laughs> um, I think her life and death were more interesting than anything she wrote. Don't you? <laughs> That, that also kind of circles back to the four yeah. similarities with like interesting not interesting. i also think it's very social self pred i also feel like he has a lot of like shame body language which i think is like interesting because he is like you know like in the public eye receiving you know i feel like you can kind of see interviews where he can kind of get indignant with the interviewer but here he's like oh like i'm trying to be nice i'm trying to you know what I mean? Yeah. He's touching he's, his face and like kind of like this and he's like sort of like almost like curling into himself, which I feel like is a sort of, um, hello, Emily. Yeah, I think that's a good point that his body language is sort of folded over. I mean, he's, it's very, it's a charming way of, of having that kind of body language though. Like it's still, maybe that's because he's an image type and it is kind of, in some way going to be like filtered and and um and crafted but it is a more um like vulnerable um yeah it's it's not like a like a power stance by all means yeah. by any means but it's and, like the mix between you know, the withdrawn and the assertive like he's withdrawing sort of like curling into himself but he's also like you can see within him like the inner self, like almost pushing out and like listening and um, being receptive to like what the audience is saying. So I feel like that's very characteristic of that like three, four range um, to be like partly wild off, but like partly like almost inside, you can see them like pushing outward and like interested in what the audience has to say. Yeah, he was like leaning forward, listening attentively. And then like when he didn't quite hear what that girl said, he's like, yeah, he was actually hearing. interested, like he actually wanted mm -hmm. to know. Yeah, he kept talking about the novelty, like, don't say what everyone else is saying, like, say something new. I want something mm -hmm. different and interesting. Like, this is interesting. Like, are you interesting? No, you're boring. Cancelled. Um, <laughs> like, to the pile of rubbish with the rest of them um, watched like the first half of the russell brand video with you guys and it was just interesting how um on how russell brand just didn't take the whole image thing or being more interesting very seriously compared to morrissey like for morrissey i got the sense that it was like a very big deal to him and it's very serious to look exactly the way that he wanted to look Mm. Uh, it's just interesting you can see the like the calculation or like yeah just a very intentional way of framing himself whereas Russell Brand was more yeah. like, fluid and loose with playful. it yeah he's very and ironically everything. Russell very. comes across as more at least to me Russell comes across as more interesting <laughs> by virtue yeah. of being more go with the flow with things and like organic I guess um 
Well, but that yeah. kind of speaks to almost the curse of the types, right? It's like <laughs> right. the seven will never be free because they're always seeking freedom or um, and the four will maybe never be the most unique or interesting <laughs> because that's what they're obsessed with. So they can't right. let go. Yeah. yeah, it is kind of boring to be so obsessed with being unique. Certain types get glamorized or whatever, and it's like everyone's in their own personal hell. It just seems more appealing when you're looking at somebody else's. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when I typed as a four a long time ago, um, that, was one of the things, that was one of the things that I um, did relate to, actually, is feeling like um, sort of superior or like not superior but like just like not relating to others like being special you know mm -hmm. but it's like it turns out to more be like a nine response of like an insecurity around not being special to then want to be special and seen a nine having an insecurity around being not mm -hmm. special versus a right, four right. completely convinced that okay. they are special. That's like a very different. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say with my different wing, approach. I've always been completely convinced that I'm special and unique and like no one can tell me otherwise. Like I felt comfortable typing as like the most common three, six, nine, triple attachment type. Cause I was like, I don't, I, even if I'm triple attachment, I'm like still super unique. The most unique triple attachment in the world. Like, I don't care. Like, <laughs> Dark Have you had any instances where your image was challenged, where you met someone who was similar to you, but doing you better than you, if that makes sense? Me? Yeah. <sighs> I mean, back in the day, but I think over time I've made my, I've constructed my image to be so uh, particular to myself that nowadays I never really meet anyone who does me like better than me. Back in the day, I'd meet people who did a, like a version of more of what I wanted to be better than me all the time which is why I felt like such intense shame and like self-hate all the time but over time as I like constructed my image into something and like transformed my shame into something like so uniquely like Bizu, like I just don't know any but I'm not I haven't encountered anyone who's like quite like me so you like specialized to the point that yeah I got there like, would be no competition yeah, I got super specialized and like, I guess like sort of subverted my shame that way. Cause it's like, well, everything that's shameful about me is still like a special part of what makes Bizu Bizu. So it's like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I guess if you make your own category, then you're the best one. Yeah, I just made my, I just like made my own category. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how that manifests too with like the different head centers and Cause I do feel like four with seven is like, you almost get cr crazy, like with like too many things or something like, mm -hmm. like you literally can't compare with me because like you would have so much catching up to do. I guess five is burrowing. Um, yeah. And then, oh, yeah, I feel, oh God, sorry. Six is like checking and tracking what other people are doing and adapting as needed. Even more health wow. social too. Yeah. I remember. I think Joseph mentioned something on a podcast or maybe or about like, oh, finding out that somebody else liked something that he liked and then be like, oh, well, I guess I have to hate this now. Or, you know. So I, get um, that too, so I don't think that that's for yeah. four because I get that too. It's like, I don't share but, the music I listen to because I'm like, if I know, if other people I know listen to it, I don't like it anymore. It'll ruin it for you. And you're like, I don't want to ruin this for me. Yeah, so, I like when I had like the last time I had a roommate I like stopped just listening on headphones because I didn't want her copying me and like listening to the same music as me because it would ruin my favorite music so if you're just pure just like go against I think that's actually more six like a counterphobic six move but like all fours have like their own thing they have their own they're not all like cookie cutter like 
they have things they're okay with relating about they have things they're not okay with relating about yeah, I think and like whatever the wherever the ego image stuff exists is where they don't want to relate and everything else it doesn't matter like right or it's like okay uh, with certain people maybe like I'm just speaking as like a forfix but it's like um yeah some stuff I don't give a fuck about but other stuff or it's like I don't give a fuck about with these people but then if mm-hmm. there's other people then right like, ugh, like yeah it's it's like it's awful to be honest but at least we got the seven Ashanti because it's like we got like a million <laughs> so technically it like eradicates it on some level because he's like you'll never catch me <laughs> but, okay so you can like cut off like oh i, I liked this but i can throw this away because i have so many other things that yeah. i like that and also the mania you can have that you, like seven mania is that like no one can also match like your level of energy with your interest in a certain arena like yeah, they have had like weird friends over the years that got competitive with me like they started liking something that I liked and then got competitive and it's like you're never gonna catch me like I <laughs> have like give it up honey like <laughs> I've had too much white cloth <laughs> if someone relates to something I like it's like it can dull my interest in it over time it's like I feel like it becomes routine like for instance I when she first came out I was obsessed with Lana Del Rey and then when she became more and more famous I like lost more interest like that's just one example of many as a three I feel like or whatever mostly a three like I feel like I can so like out compete people so even if you like what I like I'm just gonna own it even more and maybe it's not it's different from a seven where it's just like I'll run with something different it's like no I'm just gonna hold on to this relation because it's attachment it's like I have a relation my attachment to this thing is stronger than yours and I'm just gonna like out compete you on it you can't be a three wing four fix or a four wing three fix even if it's last and like not have a competitive streak to you three wing twos I think are better able to hide it from themselves sometimes but they're still competitive three wing two fixes but three fours can't hide it to themselves because of that envy aspect. Yeah, I also think that it's like, uh, that it relates to your dominant instinct. You know, if you have like something that you, that you actually care about and then, yeah, like that's, that's like the thing that you become competitive in, I think. Um, I don't really feel that competitive. Um, I feel like what Abizu was saying earlier, I'm like, I'm just going to do my own thing generally. Um, I don't feel like I have to prove things. I don't know though. That's kind of yeah, interesting. That's I got to think about it a bit. Well, I think three wing two as a fix, especially last is going to be less like that. Um, but I think three and four together is uh, you're self-aware of your competitiveness. I- I have never th- thought of myself as competitive. Like that was kind of part of my personal narrative since like growing up. Like I was, my mom tried to get me into sports and then didn't work out. But I think part of it is like, I have the sense that being outwardly competitive and having to try is actually really cringy. Yeah. yeah. Like no, I but- don't ever want to, <clears throat> Like by fully embracing the competitiveness, then right. that is committing to caring about something, mm-hmm. which I don't want to do. But, um, yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I think that's me. part of a competitive nature is that you don't want to come across as, because the top competitors, they don't come, the people who come across as very outwardly competitive, unless they're like three, seven, eight mixes or whatever, who are, clear to become be as outwardly competitive as they want like part of the competitive like spirit is like doing it on the sly you know what I mean that's how you like compete is like you do it on the sly but I could be wrong I I, as like a three dom or whatever I could be over projecting that onto three fixers when maybe three fixers don't have that, or at least like in 
three fixed lasts that don't, don't have that. I could be just over projecting. Well, I wanted to say more on that. Um, so I, yeah, I never thought of myself as competitive, but I definitely care about being sort of the best at things. So like I was a band geek in high school. And so it was very important to me to be first chair. Um, and it was, I, <laughs> I remember in middle school, my band teacher actually put me in second chair during an audition, like a, you know, um, like a, a chairing thing um, on purpose, like knowing that I was better, but because I think he wanted me to not be so complacent. Um, and it drove me crazy because like the, the person who got first chair, she was a friend of mine, but she would always ask me about like, oh, how do you finger this note? How do you play this? How do you do this? And I'm like, this is how you do it. Um, mm. Yeah, through me too, helping, but also like hating every minute because I knew that I was supposed to be in first chair. Um, That's some whiplash shit. <laughs> yeah and I mean it was only for but, like it wasn't that long but it is interesting to think about like if your image like as a fix versus the core it's like you're gonna have like uh, like all these layers on top of the competition that's like no that's not right like, yeah I, I, I may I may be like, wrong don't do that. but if you're like a core three let's say like you're not gonna have that um those layers to work through to like I'm just gonna fucking like destroy <laughs> yeah I think I may be wrong about the fix thing maybe uh, all three fixers aren't competitive but yeah so I could be wrong about yeah, over projecting kind of, like, like image like um how you uh, it could uh, could maybe not even manifest competitively so much as just how you view yourself like oh I'm not as good as this person and then it just becomes this sort of shitty feeling instead of like I'm gonna go. I'm gonna right. go like piss. I'm gonna kill you. Like Walk you can't help but compare yourself anything. to other people, and then have your value of yourself tied into that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that's probably more accurate. Because yeah, the, the three is like underneath layers of nine and six or something that's like telling you it's not good to like be like. Um, I'm the best motherfucker, and then there's like the nine harmony thing where it's like. And I should also make everybody feel okay. And like, we should all be friends and like. Yeah. yeah. They're very humble. Yeah. It's a humble combination, what, nine sex, the, right? One way I've always been able to convince myself I am a three is that I have that like killer instinct. Like, I don't know how to describe it, but like any, I guess it, it, it this only applies to core threes, but it's like core threes have just like killer instinct where it's like super competitive and it's like, I'll like slice your throat. I'll like annihilate you. Like if you, you know, I'll be polite. I'll be nice and like whatever. And I want to play nice and be a good teammate and whatever, but like, don't fucking cross me. Like don't fucking like compete on my turf or like. Yeah. Like you want to play I'll my game. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I know the rule. Like I'll knife a bitch. Like don't. <laughs> but Larissa, I feel like you, it's not, maybe I'm wrong, but it sounds like um, it's not necessarily about being the best and beating them out. It's more about like the spiteful destruction of them. Oh yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, I don't, you know? really, I don't care. Like the, I, the best to me is like a nebulous non-existent. Well, I'm just vibing, I'm doing my thing over here. But as soon as somebody like, yeah, like comes and pit, sorry to use this metaphor. Um, if they come and piss oh, off, like, I didn't even care. Yeah. Yeah. Like, Oh yeah. You wanna do that? Well guess what? You don't know. I'm no, I'm a seven, but I am patient. Like I'm a <laughs> long gamer. I don't care if this takes 10 years. So <laughs> yeah, I got all the energy. There's, There's like a underhanded competitiveness with people who have nine and three or six and three. Like there's we'll be competitive, but we're not gonna like broadcast it. It's more yeah. of like a passive aggressive type of thing that we might do. Yeah you don't have to compete like in this you know the way you see it on tv like where it's like so obvious it's like so blatant like to me that's unsophisticated anyway it's like 
don't be more sophisticated. Like you can still be friends okay, with right, people, right. have a good network, like be a, a, a like you know a trusted person, and you can be trustworthy. Like to me, that trust is very important. But you can still further your own interests. I think it's kind of like running for a bus in my mind. Like I would never <laughs> run for a bus. I would never <laughs> like obviously compete over something. But like an example would be in high school like in my classes people like after a test or something people would be like oh what'd you get what'd you get and you know we'd be discussing grades and be like oh no I just got this and it would be the highest score and I you know I wouldn't make a big deal of it out of it but it like felt really good to mm-hmm. know that I did the best at this and I'm the smartest or whatever but I would never like rub that in anyone's face or Oh like, no! I, I no. would never yeah. even be the one to like start that conversation. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Wait yeah. For no, well, that's bad. <laughs> but I, but I, yeah, you're just like waiting, like <laughs> trying to like. Are you wondering? <laughs> <laughs> I want them to talk about it so then I can share it, and then mm-hmm. they'll see that I'm special. <laughs> I dropped out of our school four different times, but it, but I was always like massively triggered by the kids who were like, "What was your grade?" Like where they were always like. And like when I, I was so I was like too young, I think, to consciously really understand what was happening, but I didn't like it. Like I was like, why do you need my grade? Like, why do you need to know what I got? Like, that's not mm-hmm. your fucking business. And it was like this constant, probably because it's partly art related stuff too. People were so maybe they're like that in other stuff, but it's so subjective in the arts stuff that people were just always like, who's the favorite? And then as soon as like you got too high, it's like suddenly there was like a target on your back that like, but I always like had this like feeling around me when I could like sense like, oh, someone's being competitive with me. And like, it was- Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't wanna, I just wanna clarify for my image sake that I was never like a competitive person like that. Like- I'm not judging you. What what grade did you get or- Okay. Bye. 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 Do you think? Oh, wish I'd been a bit nicer. <laughs> uh, I don't recall other feelings. <laughs> <laughs> oh.